In today's video, I'll be focusing on the problem. And you need to understand this before you can do anything else. But in future episodes of the series, I'll be going through what I believe to be a best practice approach to optimization and doing this step by step so that hopefully you can follow that same process. Now, even if you're an experienced and successful trader, I'm convinced there'll be things that you can adopt to improve your processes further also. So if you want to be notified when these future episodes are released, then please do click subscribe now and then you'll be sure not to miss them. So now let's switch over to the PC and take a closer look at the problem. I'm going to show you a model now that simulates the issues that I've just spoken about. Please understand this isn't meant to be an exact simulation of an optimization process, but what it does do extremely well is illustrate the issue. Now I've shown this model to numerous traders over the years and the interesting thing is that most of those traders had no idea that these problems even existed and even those that did suspect it certainly didn't understand the extent or the significance of them. So the first part of the model simulates parameter values for a system that has no edge whatsoever. It simulates a system that opens trades at random and then closes them based on either a stop loss or a take profit that are equidistant, so they're the same distance from the entry point. And so, of course, this results on average in 50% winning trades and 50% losing trades. So let me just talk you through some of the parameters here. So we're starting off with 1,000 euros in equity. And at the moment, we're looking at just one random system. And we're looking at that over 500 trades. So what you can see on the chart here represents 500 individual random trades. And at the moment, we're getting this sort of random walk um, in the equity curve. The, the stop loss value and the take profit value are configurable based on a percentage of the equity, as are the trading costs that we're going to apply to this. So these cover, for example, commission, spread and the swap. So if we want to, we can easily just regenerate the random data. And here you can see the equity curve changes based on that. And sometimes, like the one we've got now, we get what looks like a system that has some form of edge. But of course, we know that that isn't actually the case. Sometimes it looks more like a random walk. And then sometimes it's the opposite. And we actually see a decrease in the equity here that looks like a losing system. But of course, all of these that we're looking at are completely random, um, including the one that looked really good a moment ago. Now, this, this, this problem is accentuated when we start to look at more of these simultaneously. So I'm going to turn this, the number of systems that we're looking at to 10. Okay. So we're now seeing 10 of these uh, random walks. And again, we can just recalculate these. And again, what you notice is that there's usually at least one system that looks as if it's performing well with some form of edge, even though it isn't. Okay, so we've got a couple couple here that are looking quite good. This one looks very good. And so on. Okay. The problem gets even worse when we increase the number of systems. So we're going to go to 30 now. And so now we usually get maybe two, three, four systems that all look as though they exhibit the, 
the characteristics of some kind of system with an edge. So hopefully you're starting to see what the issue is here. And that is that when we do an optimization, how do we know if the results we're getting are because of an edge that the system we've developed has? And how do we know if they're just pure random chance? Because the thing is, if we are choosing a system here that doesn't have an edge, then as soon as we put this live, it's as likely to lose money as it is to, to gain money.